So tonight's demo is about the scruffy brush. So I'm going to be sharing with you these three fellas and what all the magic they can do. Okay. They are wonderful, of course, as we know, for um, creating beautiful um, foliage on trees and shrubs and things like that. But there's a lot more that they can do also. So I'm going to share all of those things with you, or at least the things that I thought of. Uh, maybe you have some other suggestions too. Okay, so let's get to the overhead camera and we will get started with that. There we go. And here we are. Okay, so I have the paints out from when I created my, my little practice sheet right here. And I want to get up just a little bit higher. All right, and so I'm working with a few colors, obviously greens, and I want to put out a little bit of yellow. So I've got some daffodil yellow right here, just a touch, not much, okay? A little daffodil yellow. I've got citrus green, sap green, wicker white, violet pansy, a little blue peacock, and a little bit of floating medium. All right, so I know we don't usually use floating medium, with the scruffy, but we're going to do that tonight. All right, so I'm going to show you, of course, how to get the basic foliage, um, how to use this brush correctly, and then also how to create some grasses, some waving grasses and things that get tall. I know we use our um, rake brush for that, but you can also get some very interesting looks for these tall grasses quickly with our scruffy brush, okay? And then, of course, the wisteria that we're all familiar with and some... Um, flowers, some very impressionistic looking clusters of flowers like flocks. And then we've got some clouds here, right? I'm going to show you how to get that with the scruffy. And then a little bit of Queen Anne's lace, right? Just a little bit of light pouncing. Baby's breath, Queen Anne's lace, any of those little light lacy flowers, this brush is really good for that. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be working with all three sizes here and sharing you, with you what I do to work with those. Use the scruffy brush for fur on Santa hats. Absolutely great. Yep, we do do that. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, the big guy first. Okay, so this is the three quarter inch scruffy. And I'm going to share with you a couple of things about how we work with scruffies when they come out of the packaging. Some of this might be redundant for those of you who already know, but, but just bear with me. Um, when they come out of the packaging, they're usually flat like this. Okay, so they're usually kind of um, straight up. And these are natural hair bristles. They're not real stiff, but they're somewhat stiff. Okay, they're not like boar's bristles where like our... Um, um, stencil brushes are much, much stiffer and coarser. These are not quite that coarse, but they are fairly coarse. Okay. Usually they'll have a stray hair or two and you can either pull those out or they will come out naturally. If they come out in your painting, just let the painting dry and then you can pick them out quite easily without messing up the paint. Okay, and now when you use this brush, we always use it dry. We don't put it in water like we do our flat brushes, our synthetic bristle brushes, which are our flat brushes can take that water and it will run off quite easily. With a, with a natural hair brush, it's just like our hair where it takes in the water and it soaks it in into the pores. And so it takes a while for that to dry. And if you get it wet and then mix it with paint, as you're going to see when I use the medium also, it's going to thin it a great deal and really just kind of give you a muddy mess. So we, we really emphasize not using water with these brushes. Um, for many reasons and that being the main one. Okay. All right. Now when you do wash these brushes and then you're going to lay them flat to dry before you do that, you want to fluff them up so that they continue to fluff out and get a nice round kind of football look to them. Okay. And so with this one, you're going to, uh, while it's wet, you're going to pull out with your thumb and finger, go around all the outside edges like this, right? And you can even push it into your hand and fluff it out like that so that it gets nice and fluffed. And then you're going to lay, lay it like that so that it stays fluffed out. And over time, that will keep that shape much, much better. And each time you use it, you're going to do that. And then they will get more and more fluffed out because you want them wide and fluffy for the most part. Okay. All right. So now dry brush, we're going to load this. 
and I'm going to come right in here. I've got my two colors, my uh, sap green and citrus green. I'm going to pounce into citrus and come right next to my sap and pounce into that. So when you're pouncing, it is firm, right? A firm pounce into the paint. You want to pick up a good amount of paint on each side and then push so that it's pushing down, spreading those bristles out and loading the brush with paint. All right, so a good loaded brush is going to have paint up inside the bristles and on the outside tips. There is no rule like half full. Actually, you don't want to get it that much that full. You just um, want to get a nice coating so you don't see the color of the brush through the paint. Okay, that's usually the rule I try to stick with. Then when you're pouncing, you're going to use the same um, pressure and firmness when you pounce, just like you do when you're loading. Okay. All right. So when you come to your surface and you want to create something, let me just turn this a little more. There we go. All right. We're going to work on just some basic um, shrubs. Okay. Bushes. And I'm going to keep the light color up on my brush. When you're loading it, double loading, you don't load it half and half horizontally. You load it half and half vertically. <laughs> Sorry. So that vertically this way, so that you have this top half of the football or oval shape is one color. And then the other half is the other color. Okay. Now, when you're pouncing, you're going to hold the brush straight up and down. And let's come down just a little bit closer. There we go and you're going to pounce straight up and down with that handle. So you're firmly, but lightly pouncing, and you're gonna create um, a random pattern, right? You're not trying to, a hedge, you're not trying, like if you were doing a, um, the trim on a Santa's hat, right? You might go this way, straight across, all right, but or a hedge or something like that. But if you're doing more of a shrub, you're going to do more of a rounded and then you might come through the middle, get a little more of that light green and come through the middle like that. So you can create layers. OK. Then if you wanted to add just a little more oomph to that light color, you could pounce into just a touch of this yellow. And when you come in front, that's going to give you just a little bit different, brighter color. So the back might be one color, the front might be another. You could even pounce into a little bit of white on that light edge, right? And let's come right in here and you can see the difference right there. See that? So notice as I'm pouncing, I'm going in a little bit of a circular motion. And then you can turn and you can even angle the brush. So if you just want that dark color, you can tip the handle back and you just get the dark color. You want just the light color tip forward on that light color like that. Okay. So you can create those different layers very quickly and easily. All right. Now that's the big guy. And we can use this for any of the other things I'm about to demonstrate to you, but because I don't want green and anything. Oh, no, I do too. I have one other thing I want to share with you. Okay. So let me put out just a little more of my citrus green. Okay. I've got plenty of sap, but I need a little more citrus. Okay. So let me show you how I would get some um, pretty simple looking um, grasses, right? These long blades of grass from far away, right? I'm not trying to create up close strokes, but from far away. All right. So I might take my brush and I'm just going to sweep it just like I would with a flat brush or a rake brush. And you're going to go up like this. You get a little more dark, right? Tip back on the dark and you're going to get streaks of color. Let's add just a little bit of medium to this brush. And because I'm on paper, there we go. And you might sweep down or up and you're going to get some grasses very quickly and easily. I did. I do this with my um, clock when we do that, all the grass in the middle. All right. So you can turn the brush if you want dark coming down right there or turn sweep up with the light. But you get a very quick looking field of grass and it's long, right? We're not talking about a well mowed 
um, yard here. This might be long like a meadow. Okay, so you can sweep back and forth like that. Then what I like to do is come in with the lighter color and maybe just a touch of white again on that lighter color. Work that in. And very lightly you can tap at the top. Okay, a little bit of that. And I'm tipping forward on the edge of my brush, so my handle is tipping this way. I've never used it this way before, but when I came up with um, doing that field of, of grass on my clock, I wanted to do it quickly because I wanted to be able to do other things and not have to worry about how long it took to hand stroke that all in there. But look here, you can get little tufts. So you know how grass gets those little grass seeded heads on it? You can just very quickly pounce those in. And how nice does that look? You can see how the medium start does start to muddy the color. So you don't want to use a lot of medium and you want to let it all run out before you go get more. Okay. So then once you get all that done, then you could come down in here and even pounce just a little bit of a shrub in front of that to kind of hide the beginnings of those strokes. See there? And now you've got a really pretty little grassy field and it works really fast. Okay, so that's our big guy. I'm going to put him in the water and we're going to skip now to our medium size brush. And I'm going to share with you a couple of things we do with that. Okay, so let's tip this up a little more and I'm going to now come and load this with some white. So I'm going to get just a little bit of white and I'm going to come over here and kind of work that into my brush. All right. So by working it in, I mean, I'm in this case, I'm making swirls with it here on my plate, just a little bit of white and then working it into my brush. Can you see how that's worked in? Then I'm going to come and get just a little bit of this medium, a little bit and work that into my brush. All right. So now I've got white and medium. And then let's come into this blue peacock, just a tiny bit on one edge, tiny, tiny bit. Work that in, but don't let it come over too far into your white. If you do come get some fresh white and keep that to one side of your brush. And I've got a little half and half going there. Okay. Grab some medium, tap that in and we're good to go. So I'm going to show you how to do, um, some clouds very quickly and easily with this brush. Let's see. Do you ever mix the size of the brushes in one area? I, I suppose you could. Um, I, if you needed to, absolutely. There's no, no hard, fast rule that says you can't. Um, I've never really had much of a need to do that. I will show you where I'm going to come in here in a little bit and put pounce some pretty little um, mounds of, of phlox flowers in front here and I'll be using the smaller brush. So you do have a little bit of a combination there. Okay. All right. So working on these clouds, I'm going to come in here with my handle straight up and down and I'm going to make circles. I want to make sure my hand's not getting in the way. There we go. So you're making circles with the light color up, creating the top of your cloud. This is going to be one layer. All right. So that's the back and I'm pushing my brush and scrubbing circles. All right. Keeping that dark handle, dark part down, light part to the top. All right. You can tip to one color. If you want to emphasize the white tip to the back color, if you want to emphasize the dark. All right. So with clouds, you need layers of color for them to show. Okay, so now I'm going to come right through here and we're going to, let me get just a little more white and a little bit of medium. All right, and we're going to come right in front here and create a second layer. So you're going to go right up over that blue, maybe come up a little higher in some spots, tip back into the blue to create that shadowy area. Okay. So layers of clouds, we can come back up here. This looks really nice on a, an already based in blue sky and you're just getting little wispy clouds. Okay. But can you see all those little layers? All 
All right, a little more white. I've already got plenty of medium in there, so I'm not getting any more. And then I'm just going to do some closer ones right here. All right, so just a little cluster of simple clouds. And they're not forced, so I'm not looking for straight lines. These are wispy, so you might have little bumps up and down, a little white and blue mixing to create different shadows and value or shades and values. You can get some heavier white in here and then start to do something a little more stronger. Okay, but you get the layers and it's fluffy, yes. Good word, Chitra. <laughs> nice and fluffy. All right. Then to finish that off, you're just going to kind of trail that off into nothing there. So this is a fun way to do clouds. I like to do them this way quite frequently. Okay, so you got lots of layers. It's light and fluffy. Then you can come and tap into just a little bit of heavy white and maybe come out to some of these tops of these curls or curves on the way on the waves on the clouds and emphasize some brighter white you know where the sun's hitting it or they're more prominent from the parts that are back in shadow All right so it's a great way and you can pull them down just streak them down a little bit great way to work with this natural haired brush and get these nice soft looks because it's kind of like a mop okay all right, so that's our big guy. Now, um, before I move on, I want to share with you, or that's not the big guy, it's a medium guy. I'm going to double load some, some um, wicker white and violet pansy right there. And you can do flower centers with this brush, or the small brush is better. All right, but we also do things like um, wisteria. And so... With wisteria, you start out by pouncing a round ball shape like that. Okay, I want a little more dark in there, so let me get through there. There we go. And then you create a little tail, like a tornado, like that, right? And it's hanging down. And you tip the brush to the side to get that little point down there, okay? So, a little point right there. And if you need to emphasize some of the white, you can come back in, just tip it in like that. So hello, Miss Denise. Thank you for joining. Okay, so that's another way we use this brush. And again, for a flower center, I'm going to show you with the small brush. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the water and we're going to skip over to our little guy here. So this is the quarter inch scruffy, a little bit shorter bristles. Um, so you don't need to pounce this quite as hard. You can be a little more gentle with this one. Um, so a couple of different things I'm going to share with you in this one. Let me get some white on one half, and we'll get some of this peacock blue on the other. So a little bit of half of white, half blue. Firm pressure when you're pouncing. Okay, so... You can come in and do a really pretty flower center, but I'm going to share with you first how to get these kind of flocks. Flocks are like little mounds of colored flowers. They look like this. Howdy, howdy, Miss Barb. Right? So you've got, you can have the light color up. And the, or excuse me, the light color down and the dark color up for a little bit more prominent look, or you can flip it around. And I'm gonna show you right here in these little bushes here, you can tap in little mounds of those blue flowers. They come in blue, purple, pink, right? So this is where I think the question was, have I ever worked with both brushes in the same size, or different size brushes on the same thing? This would be it right here. Okay, so you got the light color up or the light color down, all right? Now, um, wiping this brush off, because if you want to reuse a brush, you don't want to go into water, but I am going to wipe it off really well on paper towel. Let me get a piece out here that I can show you. Oops. 
So I'm going to come right in here and just wipe it off, get as much of that paint off and out of there as I can so that it's as dry as possible and I'm not going to get mud. Okay, so I've got as much of that out of there as I can and then I want to come here and I'm going to load with light green and daffodil yellow. All right, a little bit of white on that yellow edge, a little more right there. All right, so we've got daffodil yellow, light green, maybe a little bit of the sap green on the light green edge. Okay, so when you're doing a flower center, let's come right up here and you can pounce around. You make like a little half round and then bring the dark color down to the bottom. All right. And get a little bit of white on there. So you've got a darker center and then you come around just like we do the centers on our um, sunflowers, right? Just with a smaller brush and you create like a little donut shape. So you've got the dark green in the middle right there and you go around the top like this and then you cut through the bottom like that. Okay. Now you can do it that way or you can go all the way around. So you keep the light color all the way around the outside and you're just twisting the brush in a circle with the dark in the center. So lots of things we can use this scruffy brush for. Like that. Okay. So a couple of different ways you can use it for the flower center. Wiping this brush off again really well on paper towel. Or it's always a good idea to have another one available if you wanted to be able to do multiple things. But I think I got most of that paint out. All right. Now I'm going to come and get just a little a very light load of white just on one half of the brush. Very, very light. And if it's too heavy, you can tap it off on paper towel or somewhere else on your plate. And we're going to just create a little baby's breath cluster or a, a Queen Anne's lace. So let's come down real close here. All right. And just lightly pounce. See how light that is? Let me get a little bit more. You're going to go through it very quickly. All right. So that would be the cap to a lacy Queen Anne's lace flower. Now, if you wanted to see what the flower looked like, you come in with a number two script liner. You're going to get some inky sap and citrus or you, you can use a small flat brush. Okay. And you would, first of all, I should have done this first. Um, you would create the little cup like that, that has all the little stems that come out. See there. So in the back and then in the front, you're going to come around in front of those. Everything comes from the center spot right here. See, so you're going to come around and up, around and up, up the middle. Okay. Then once you get that, you can come back in with your small scruffy and that white, and you're just going to pounce a little more white. Pounce a little lacy top on there. I'm really not getting much white on here. I think it's my paper is dry. There we go. A little lacy top on top of that. There we go. Okay. So that's a lot of different applications for this particular brush. Um, hope that really helped you kind of open up your mind as far as opportunities um, for you to use this brush. See there with a little bit of purple in there that makes a really pretty flocks color also. 
Okay. All right. So let's back up just a little bit here and you can see all the different things that we did in that very short period of time. A little bit higher. There we go. <laughs> all right. So we've got shrubs. We've got a hedge. We've got flower centers. We've got tall grass. We've got small short flower clusters. We've got clouds. We've got wisteria. We've got Queen Anne's lace. And the list goes on and on. That's just a few of the things that you can do with this wonderful scruffy brush. So I hope that demo really helped you think about some of the things that you can do with those brushes in your paintings.